Hello, dear children. Welcome to Superior English. This is Simi Kaur bringing forth before you the last lesson from Flamingo by Alphonse Daudet. This chapter, the last lesson, is going to be a wonderful journey and is going to teach you many lessons for life. So open your mind. As it is rightly said, the mind is like a parachute. It works best when it is open. So let us embark on this journey with an open mind and absorb the lesson to the highest potential. Since the chapter is in the form of a story, I will story tell you without missing any minutest detail. I will be using one power words to boost your vocabulary and give weight to your answers. Two will try to make the learning effortless and pleasurable. Three will highlight the central idea, move into the core and befittingly conclude. Let's start with the poet. Alphonse Daudet was a French novelist and a short story writer. The last lesson is set in the days of Franco-Prussian War, 1870 to 1871. War between France and Prussia in which France was defeated by Prussia, led by the Prussian statesman Bismarck. Prussia was a German kingdom and the Prussians had defeated the French in the war. As a result, the French districts of Alsace and Lorraine had passed into Prussian hands. The Prussians had gained political dominance over France and now they wanted to impose language chauvinism or linguistic chauvinism over them. What is language chauvinism or linguistic chauvinism, children? It is an idea or belief that one's language is superior to others, especially when this language is that of the ruling class. So an order came from Berlin, the capital of Germany, that French would be totally abolished in the schools of Alsace and Lorraine and only German would be taught. Exactly the same happened to us when we were under the British rule. The British, who were the ruling class, tried to impose English on us by using cunning and crafty means. Central idea of the story. So the central idea of the story, the last lesson, is that children, the Prussians were trying to impose the language German on the French people and what undergoes in the minds of the students of the school of Alsace where the teacher M. Hamel is taking the very last lesson of French. Here you will encounter so many emotions of the students and the teacher and experience their pain of being separated from their language. Lessons to be learned from this chapter, the last lesson. One. How important it is to know our own language and respect it. 2. Let us never put off things till tomorrow. Who knows that tomorrow may not come at all. Remember, now is the moment to act and achieve. 3. How helpless a person feels when he is deprived of his language. How will he communicate his feelings and express his emotions? Now, let's begin with the story, children. The story revolves around a young boy, Franz, who, like all students, does not like going to school, especially on that particular day when he had not learned the lesson on participles, which his teacher had asked him to do. More so, the morning was so warm, so bright, the birds were chirping, the Prussian soldiers were drilling. It was so tempting. But he put up a strong resistance to temptation and hurried off to school. Before the school, there came a town hall which had a bulletin board. What is a bulletin board, children? It is a kind of notice board used for displaying messages to announce events or provide information. And for the last two years, all the bad news had come from there. From where? From the bulletin board. The lost battles, the draft, the orders of the commanding officer and the narrator wondered 
what would be the bad news now anyways as he was already late he hurried to reach the school and guess what did he notice what did he observe instead of the usual bustle noise and commotion the school was still and silent and as little franz opened the door to get into the class the teacher m hemel instead of scolding him for being late spoke to him very kindly go to your place quickly little franz we were beginning without you what surprised franz more was the dress m hemel was wearing the beautiful green coat frilled shirt and the little black silk cap all embroidered which he wore only on inspection and prize days the surprises were not yet over the back benches which were always empty were now occupied by the village people like the old horser the former mayor the former postmaster and several others horser had brought an old primer thumbed at the edges what is a primer children it is an elementary or an introductory book for learning a language we can also say it is a beginners book so the primer of the old horser was thumbed at the edges meaning the book was slightly damaged because of constant use as friends were still trying to make out or understand what was happening m hemel the teacher took his position and in a gentle but grave tone said my children this is the last lesson i shall give you the order has come from berlin to teach only german in the schools of elsass and lorraine the new master comes tomorrow this is your last french lesson i want you to be very attentive what a thunder clap these words were to me thunder clap thunder is a sound caused by lightning thunder clap is clap of thunder something loud sharp or sudden these words of m hemel came as a great shock as a great jolt to little car why children because french was his language and one deprived of his language is like a boat without an anchor france hardly knew how to write french had always put off learning till tomorrow and often missed his school oh the wretches oh the wretches that was what they had put up in the town hall my last french lesson why i hardly knew how to write i should never learn any more i must stop there then oh how sorry i was for not learning my lessons for seeking birds eggs or going sliding on the sar my books that had seemed such a nuisance a while ago so heavy to carry my grammar and my history of the saints were all friends now that i couldn't give up and m hemel too the idea that he was going away that i should never see him again made me forget all about his ruler and how cranky he was poor man poor man it was in honor of this last lesson that he had put on his fine sunday clothes and now i understand why the old men of the village were sitting in the back of the room it was because they were sorry too that they had not gone to school more it was their way of thanking our master for his 40 years of faithful service and of showing their respect for the country that was theirs no more while france was lost in this turmoil of thoughts he heard his name being called it was his turn to recite the poor boy was scared out of his wits he would have given anything anything in the world to recite the rules of participles flawlessly without making any mistake 
but all wishes cannot come true he got mixed up on the first words and stood there holding on to his desk his heart beating and not daring to look up feelings of guilt shame and remorse enveloped in his mind the usually strict and cranky schoolmaster accepted this mistake of france very sportingly forgive him i won't scold you little france i won't scold you little france you must feel bad enough see how it is every day we have said to ourselves bah i have plenty of time i will learn it tomorrow and now you see where we have come out ah that's the great trouble with alsas she puts off learning till tomorrow now those fellows out there will have the right to say to you how is it you pretend to be frenchman and yet you can neither speak nor write your own language but you are not the worst poor little france we all have a great deal to reproach ourselves with your parents were not anxious enough to have you learn they preferred to put you to work on a farm or at the mills so as to have a little more money and i i have also been to blame also have i not often sent you to water my flowers instead of learning your lessons and when i wanted to go fishing did i not just give you a holiday so children these profound words of m hemel were smeared with emotions emotions of love for his language and guilt for not taking effort to make the students learn the language and now now circumstances were such that they were losing their language and they could do nothing about it the great trouble with alsis is that she puts off learning till tomorrow this is a very important line depicting the psyche of the french people alsis here does not mean only the district of france but the french people as a whole who had the tendency to put off learning for tomorrow with a mindset as there is still time but now the time had gone france could not recite the rule of the participles for this the teacher m hemel held himself and the parents of the children responsible who used to make them miss the school and send them to mills and farm to earn even he being the teacher would ask them to water his plants instead of learning their lessons and also gave them a holiday when he would want to go fishing the upright teacher reminded his students of the shameful condition in which they were placed when the german could stand up and question them as to how could they then how could they call themselves french when they could neither speak nor write their language had they studied and respected their language they would not feel so guilty so remorseful the last lesson of france was not an ordinary lesson it was not an ordinary class feeling of separation from the language emotions of guilt and remorse of not learning it when there was time and the utter helplessness of being enslaved by the germans and forced to learn their language summarized the last lesson the emotional teacher m hemel went on to talk about the french language saying it was the most beautiful language in the world the clearest and the most logical it is in our psyche children that we value a thing when it is gone from our life so was the case with m hemel and his students who were utterly distressed to learn that they would have to abandon their language french and learn german instead the teacher stressed on the importance of guarding one's language jealously how precious one's language is how important it is to respect it and preserve it he declared when people are enslaved as long as they hold fast to their language it is as if they had the key to their prison this is a very significant line children which contains substance and depth language is not only a vehicle for expression of thoughts perceptions and sentiments 
but also represents our social identity. It is a strong symbol of social solidarity and people have always found ways of expressing their thoughts and feelings even when they are enslaved or oppressed as it is only language which binds them all, strengthens the bond and helps them realize their goal. So after the salutation and interaction, M. Hemel opened the grammar book and explained a chapter. Franz understood it so easily and so well. Never had he listened so carefully and never had the teacher explained so well and so patiently. It was as if the teacher wanted to give all the knowledge in one stroke. After the grammar, they had a lesson in writing. The teacher gave new copies to the students written on it. Franz answers in beautiful round handwriting. They looked like little flags floating everywhere in the schoolroom. Everyone set to work devotedly and diligently. On the roof, the pigeons cooed very low. And I thought to myself, and I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German? Even the pigeons? Will they make them sing in German? Even the pigeons? The little boy Franz was shocked by the fact that they had to let go their language French and learn German, which was forced on them by the Prussians. His mind was in a turmoil of thoughts and he wondered whether the cruel Germans who had forced the language on them would force it on the mute pigeons also. Speaking French was as natural to them as cooing was to the pigeons. Depriving them of their language would be like stopping the pigeons from cooing. Whenever Franz looked up from his writing, he saw M. Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another, as if to keep them embedded in his mind forever, since he would be seeing them for the last time. For 40 years he had been there, in the same place, with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him. Imagine, imagine the emotions attached with the school and the house. How shattered, how broken, how devastating it must have been for the poor man to leave everything all of a sudden. But keeping his emotions under control, he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last. After the writing, they had a lesson in history and then the babies chanted their ba bi bi bo bu. Old Hossa put on his spectacles and holding the primer in both hands, spelled the letters with the children. He was crying and his voice trembled with emotion and it seemed so funny that all the students wanted to laugh at, at the manner old Hossa was crying and reciting and they wanted to cry because they too were filled with sorrow, sorrow of having the last lesson of French, sorrow of never seeing the French teacher M. Hamel again. Ah! How well I remember it, that last lesson. All at once, the church clock struck twelve. It was time for the school to end. M. Hemel stood up very pale, wanted to say something, but his voice choked. Then he turned to the blackboard, took a piece of chalk, gathered all his strength and wrote as large as he could. Vive la France. That is, long live France. It is a patriotic French expression, children. Like we say, Vande Mataram or Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall and without a word he made a gesture, a sign with his hand. School is dismissed. You may go. So you can see, children, that it was a heart-rending moment in the school of Alsace where the students of M. Hemel were having the last lesson of French. The emotions were overflowing, the sorrow was profound, and words failed to come out. 
this brings us to the end of the chapter. Now we shall discuss some questions and answers from the examination point of view. Question number one. How was the atmosphere of the school different that day? Three marks. Instead of the usual bustle, the school was silent like a Sunday morning. The teacher had worn his beautiful green coat, frilled shirt and the little black silk cap which he wore only on formal occasions. In the back of the class, the village people were sitting with their primers. Question number two. When people are enslaved, as long as they hold fast to the language, it is as if they had the key to the prison. Explain these lines in context with the last lesson. Three marks. Answer. Since it was the last lesson of French, it was emotions overflowing for the students and the teacher alike. The teacher went on to describe French as the most beautiful, clearest and logical language and emphasized on the need to guard it zealously. Language was one's identity, one's root, signified singleness of purpose, like-mindedness and team spirit. It is a strong medium of expressing our thoughts and feelings in strengthening our bond even when we are enslaved or oppressed. Question number three. Franz thinks, will they make them sing in German? Even the pigeons? What could this mean? This is three marks again. Answer. The little boy Franz was shocked by the fact that they had to let go their language French and learn German which was forced on them by the Prussians. His mind was in a turmoil of thoughts and he wondered whether the cruel Germans who had forced their language on them would force it on the mute pigeons also. Speaking French was as natural to them as cooing was to the pigeons. Depriving them of their language would be like stopping the pigeons from cooing. This brings us to the end of the session children. But we must ascertain the moral of the story before we actually call it a day. This story reminds me of a famous remark of Mahatma Gandhi who said, The British never took India from us. We gave it to them. The British never took India from us. We gave it to them. Disunity, internal dissensions, Lack of team spirit and devoid of singleness of purpose made us fall an easy prey to the British rule. So the moral of the story is that we must secure our roots, our language and practice unity and cohesiveness. So children, if you like my video, do subscribe, do comment and do put forth your queries freely. Thank you.